liked her on the second day of her visit to Japan. Today she went to a cemetery for Allied soldiers who died there during the Second World War. Our Asia correspondent Caroline Kerr reports from Tokyo. At the Commonwealth War Cemetery on the outskirts of Tokyo, the Princess of Wales honoured the 1700 servicemen laid to rest here after the Second World War. Most of those she commemorated died in Japanese prisoner of war camps. Her visit coincides with a renewed effort by some POWs to seek compensation. The princess paused briefly at the grave of Private Effie Goldsmith, one young soldier among many buried here. One former prisoner of war who's just visited Tokyo said he wouldn't be satisfied until his suffering is acknowledged. I want some form of comp financial compensation, although it's only a token amount, because then it would show, it would be an act of contrition. And that really is what we're after. Despite the somber mood of her duties, today the princess was mobbed wherever she went. While the security men struggled to keep the crowds at bay, the princess herself responded with an impromptu walkabout. Tokyo was once again gripped by Diana mania. After two days here, the princess's charm offensive appears to be working. Tomorrow, she'll be at the Imperial Palace to meet the Emperor. Caroline Kerr, News at 10, Tokyo. They report tonight. this week with her visit to Japan. Every outing and walkabout was well documented, of course, including this visit to a cemetery containing the war graves of British soldiers. The cemetery at Hodogaya, to the south of Tokyo, is the resting place for more than 1,700 British and Commonwealth servicemen, almost all of whom died while prisoners of war. The princess has come here at a sensitive time. Last week, British survivors from the forced labor camps filed a writ demanding compensation and an apology for their suffering from the Japanese government. Today, she paid tribute to those who did not survive. After a brief service in the wintry sunshine, she laid a wreath in their memory at the foot of a white stone cross. It bore a handwritten message. Well, when those pictures went out on television, many viewers across the globe were probably reflecting on Diana's hair, Diana's clothes, or Diana's court case that never was. But there was one picture in that film which has changed the life of an elderly widow from Cornwall. Let's take another look at that shot. That was the grave of Private Fred Goldsmith, who died in December 1942, aged 30. Yesterday, we were talking about the wonderful story of Dora Berners-Coney, who never knew what became of her beloved brother Fred after he disappeared in Japan, until Princess Diana paused by his grave, that was. And Dora is with us today with her son, Bob. Good morning. Good morning. My goodness, what a moment. It was a moment that you didn't actually see. No, because I, you always I, turn the television off when anything. Always, I can. never could stand the anything referring to the atrocities or Japanese prison. Why I always did turn off. Always. So, so there, there <clears> you <throat> saw Princess Diana about to. That they were about as to report. As soon as it. I saw it, I knew there was going to be a conversation following regarding it. I just couldn't listen you to it. You reached for the just, off switch. Absolutely. But yes. Bob, you didn't. No. I was what just, happened in your house? I was just sat there watching the news and the, sort of taking interest in the story, but. And suddenly this name came up and it just registered that this was Mum's brother and I had to rush out and ask her if she'd seen it. Did you, did you register that straight away? Because I must yeah, say, I don't so think I would even a, look at the writing. No, it, uh, you know, it just sort of flashed at me, you know, it was F. Goldsmith. And I said, you know, I knew he was F. Goldsmith, I didn't know he was F. E. Goldsmith. And you knew he was Middlesex Regiment, of course? No. Not, you didn't, you didn't, well, didn't know that? I had known in the past, but yeah. that didn't register at all. Must have been a, quite a tingly, just his name tingly because, moment for you, wasn't it? But the name doesn't really mean much to me as part of the family. You know, he was the only goldsmith I knew in the, in the family. Yeah, uncle, you never knew. That's right. That's right. But you S rang Mum. I rang Mum said, are you watching television? She said, well, yes. I said, did you see die? She said, well, yes, I did, but I turned it off. So I said, but Freddie's grave was on there. And she just said, oh, how wonderful. You know, to so, so couldn't just, believe it, really. So what does it mean to you? Well, I just couldn't right. believe. I just couldn't believe it. I, I thought there must be surely some mistake because, over the years, I've always believed that the last photograph I had was of a temple where all the ashes of the soldiers were put in a communal place, and I knew that they were going to lay them to rest in the ter in the cemetery, but unfortunately, the war office didn't have any record of my existence, 
So therefore, they didn't notify me of the grave. So I didn't know it existed. Now, let's talk about Fred when he was alive. Because mm. you and he were very close, weren't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. He was your brother older by how many <clears throat> years? Well, almost six. Six years yes, older. that's right. I mean, yes. at one time, I know that um, you were living in Camden Town in yes, London, weren't you? Yes, that's right, yes. And that you were sent away from your mum for a yes, while. But I, then mm -hmm. you went back to live with her. Yeah, we were for... <clears throat> I had foster parents, and my brother did too. I was a, well, more or less partly adopted at six weeks old. But at seven years of age, I was taken back to my real mother, who I didn't know existed, yeah. and introduced to the lady as my mother. And the lady that had... The next door was where Freddie used to live with my mother, was the lady that adopted me, or her daughter. Right, now, like, you're living with Freddie, and yes. he's, he's so your older brother, went, and he really looked after you. So then he? when I went back home, he used to call me his lady sister, and we grew up together, and he just protected me, because the people looked after me were... He called you Dolly, didn't he? And I was always his sister Dolly. Yeah. Ultimately, he, he went away, he joined up. This is... No, we, we grew up and we spent our childhood together from there on, until he was old enough to join the Territorial Army. And then um, I used to go very often to him in the Camden High Street to the club and wait for him. And mm -hmm. he used to come home with me and uh, we were inseparable. When and did you last you... see him? 30, it was 36. And you saw him off, didn't you, at midnight yes, at Victoria and, uh, Station then in London? Yes, then I met my then I met my husband, and we were talking about also getting engaged. Fred. And he'd known he'd got to know Freddie very well, and he was also a Fred, so uh, they were great friends. And your brother said to you, "Well, you've got your own friends now, so well, I'm going off to see the world." He said, "Well, he said I said we're going to get engaged." He said, "Well, that lets me off now." He said, "My responsibilities." He said. It's up to you now, Fred, to look after my sister because she said I'm going to see the world. So after you said goodbye to him at Victoria Station, you never Victoria saw him night. again? Never yes, saw him again? No. Did you get any news at all about what was happening well, to him? Well, yes, Freddie. Well, the, of course, the war wasn't thought about, so it was peacetime. And Freddie used to send me little photographs of different games that they played and, the, well, all sorts of sports he joined then and uh, told me all about and wanted me to send pen letters out for his chums to be friendly. And uh, I had quite a lot of communication with him during that time. But after he was taken prisoner, of course, things fell silent for quite a long time. But I worked through the Red Cross to help me find him. But um, after the war, you were told that he died. Yes. But you, you yes. knew no more, although yeah. you have been put in touch with people That's I know right. since then since since the discovery of his grave mm -hmm. as far as you're concerned you do know a bit about him now yes what happened I did I did write to I did write to Lord Russell when I was in the hospital once oh. after having read the Knights of Bushido I wrote and asked him because he made a reference toward first battalion Middlesex mm. I wrote to him and he told me that he he knew a Freddie personally mm. letter of which I have now Mm -hmm. He said he knew him personally. Mm -hmm. He was proud to have known him. And, and he died of disease, him. you gather? Pardon? He died of disease. He died of dysentery, as far as I can yeah. make out, yes. And what's happening this weekend and to you? And, well, all, ever since I've known this, I've always had one wish, that I could go just there and pay homage to my brother, just as Diana did, just to stand by his graveside. That's, my husband did everything he could to help this come about, but raising a family, it wasn't easy to save up for this trip. Then out of the blue, all this has happened, and the Daily Mirror have made it possible for me to be able to go with my son to Tokyo on Sunday to visit the grave. And the World Commission people have been told to expect us on Monday. It's been an emotional yeah, moment for you, won't it? Really it really will. A dream it? come true. I, I just can't believe it. I really can. Thanks to Princess Diana, in a way. Thank you, it? Princess Diana, from the bottom of my heart. Not only for paying homage to my brother, but to all those others that she paid homage to mm. for the trip. She, mm. she really opened a new world for me, absolutely. And for many others, I'm sure. Oh, that's wonderful. Because mm. I've made several contacts since this has happened. Well, Dora, I hope uh, it's uh, a momentous weekend for you. Obviously, we'll Absolutely. be happy it all goes on. You have I'm, a safe journey. I'm afraid I'm going to wake up and find it's all a dream. Well, you're no, not. I don't think it is. No. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, as well, for coming along today. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, and good luck to you. Now, there's a moment to see him again. Freddie was trapped in Hong Kong when Japan entered the war. He died there in the Far East in 1942 as a prisoner of war. Dora tried without success 
to find her brother's grave. And then last week, something miraculous happened. I just couldn't believe it. I, I thought there must be surely some mistake because over the years, I've always believed that the last photograph I had was of a temple where all the ashes of the soldiers were put in a communal place. And I knew that they were going to lay them to rest in the, in the cemetery. But unfortunately, the war office didn't have any record of my existence. So therefore, they didn't notify me of the grave. So I didn't know it existed. Ever since I've known this, I've always had one wish that I could go just there and pay homage to my brother just as Diana did, just to stand by his graveside. Well, we followed Dora and her son Bob over to Tokyo at the weekend for one of the most momentous journeys of her life. Keeping all Dora exits and the arms clear. I'm Bo, I'm Dora's son. We're at Heathrow, just about to take off. He's very excited. I just think all this started just because I was watching the news, you know, and uh, I recognised the grave that Di was visiting. It was my mother's brother. So it's a pilgrimage. It was something I waited for so long. I never like to think that he was just put in the temple with all the ashes, but somewhere where you can pay tribute to them, it's their resting place. This little piece of ground where his ashes lie. It means a world to me to be there, just to pay homage to him. Everybody's been marvelous. We've had wonderful treatment. It's been a marvelous flight. Oh, I'm just delighted for her. She's had this chance to go. It's her life's ambition. But, you know, she knows at last where he is. To enter that graveyard and everything so still, it's a dreadful sight when you see all those rows of rows of little stones with all the young names on them. I'm here now, I've, it's something I've always dreamed of but never imagined would come true. Now that I'm here, it's, it, the feeling's wonderful. I can see my brother's little grave with all the other's graves around by the side of him, all his comrades, such a lot of sad, wasted life. He'll never be forgotten. And I'm sure these other boys won't either. I think I'm a very, very lucky lady to be, to have had the privilege to achieve my ambition to find my brother's grave at last. We were just wondering just how many people have visited these graves because it's so far away. A very emotional moment for her. Very, yeah, you know, uh, I, I don't know, she stood up to us long, you know, that. She coped very well with it. Uh, yeah, I know later on when she reflects on it, she'll be pleased that she's done what she's wanted to do for, you know, for many years. I can't thank Dinah enough. If it hadn't been for her caring to go there that day, I would never have found my brother. I know I never have, would have. I've got to write and thank her to say a personal word of thank you to her. It's all been such a marvellous experience. Sad, but just marvellous. Oh, Dora. That was a lovely film, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, thanks for letting us uh, share that years, very emotional late, time with you, but, Dora. Yeah, that was wonderful. Good morning to you and to Bob. Now, Will has been very busy on the... It's ended 50 years of anguish for a Cornish woman. Dora Berners-Sconi has just returned from an emotional visit to the Commonwealth Cemetery where her brother was buried in 1942. Louise Midgley reports on the twist of fate that finally allowed Dora to say a last goodbye. Another royal visit, but one with extraordinary consequences. Of the thousands of British war graves at Hodogaya Cemetery, the Princess of Wales chose to pause at the headstone of Private Freddie Goldsmith. 
He died aged 30 in a Japanese prison camp. Until she saw that moment on the news, his sister Dora had never known where he'd been laid to rest. Within a week, she was winging her way across the world to pay her last respects. It's a pilgrimage. It was something I waited for so long. I never liked to think that he was just put in the temple with all the ashes, but somewhere where you can pay tribute to them, it's their resting place. For Dora and her son Bob, it was indeed a moving experience. It's a dreadful sight when you see all those rows of rows of little stones with all the young names on them. I can see my brother's little grave with all the others' graves around by the side of him, all his comrades. Such a lot of sad, wasted life. He'll never be forgotten. Today, a spokesman for the Princess of Wales said... We are very pleased that the Princess's visit to the cemetery should have enabled this lady to re-establish such an important family link. It's all been such a marvellous experience. Sad, but... just marvellous. And Dora Bernasconi is now in our studios in Truro. Did you ever give up hope of finding your brother's last resting place? Well, as, <clears throat> now that I'm at this age now, and I'm a widow, I didn't think there was any chance of ever finding out any more than I did about 25 years ago. So you actually had tried in the past, had you, to find Absolutely. out where he was? Yes, I have, yes, quite a lot. Did you actually see that moment yourself on the television where Princess Diana stopped in front of his grave? No, I... I did have the news on, but as soon as I heard the word Japanese prisoner of war, I just automatically switched it off. I never watched that sort of thing. Now, within a week of the report, though, you've actually been to Japan. Now, it's a long way and it costs a lot. Did you feel that you really just had to go? Well, the whole thing wouldn't have been possible, except for the fact that Jeff <coughs> Jeffrey from the da Daily Mirror, the, the reporter, well, it, they, he just made everything possible. He pulled out every stop he could to enable me to make this flight. And his photographer knew of the right connections. And with the generosity of the Virgin Airways, Richard Ransom, they allowed me, with the help of the Daily Mirror, to be able okay, just to go across the world to see where my brother was laid for its final time. Well, it's a very moving story. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Well, we saw earlier in the press.